Throughout the development of Super Mario 64, we've seen numerous cut and altered ideas, whether it be cut levels, a multiplayer mode, or even a playable Yoshi. But one aspect we never explored are the beta models of the game, whether it be friend, foe, or just early versions of entirely cut objects. Today on Cut Content, we explore the beta models of Super Mario 64. If you enjoy this video, please hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell too to further support us and keep creating new videos. To start it off, we'll explore the beta models of the game's characters which of course starts with Mario. On first inspection, the beta model of Mario may not look any different, but if you look closely, you'll notice that it is made of less polygons, and of course the model is of a darker shade. But of course, you're all here for Luigi. We've explored Luigi before when he was first discovered, but since then we have learned of not only his base high poly model, but also of a medium and low poly model too. In case some of you don't know, Mario 64 and many other games feature low poly models when the character is far enough in order to save on resources as you wouldn't be able to see them. Unless you play this 480i game in HD and then... Ugh. What I find interesting is how Luigi is fatter in his medium poly model. Next up is Princess Peach. In this instance, outside of her old model being of a lower poly and not yet textured, this version has legs. I too also realized today that she was floating the whole time. Likely they scrapped her legs since you never see them anyways to possibly save on resources. Along with this, several animations come with it. While we see her walk in the final game, here we can see her legs are functional as she walks. The other interesting bit is her walking and waving, something that doesn't happen in the final game as she is standing when she waves. Yoshi is next which while his model was pretty similar to the final games, the main difference comes in the soles of his shoes that were actually modeled. This likely scrapped since we couldn't see them anyways, and again to save on resources possibly. There is also a running animation too, which in the final game, he simply walks around instead. Now on to other NPCs, which will start with Mips the Rabbit. Mips was originally going to be pink as opposed to yellow, a color scheme that would return for Super Mario 64 DS, which had pink rabbits too. Along with this comes animations, including a cut animation of Mips being thrown and falling. Something that can't be done normally, but also something that is actually still in the data of the final game too, and can be hacked in for Mario to throw Mips. Now on to our favorite penguin in her most derpy beta form. Seen in various demos of the 95 build, Ping the Penguin used to be a lot thinner and have a face that has seen things. And oddly enough, this design was used for the Kellogg's Mini Wheats promotion in 96, looking hella smug here. Now on to the beta enemies. We've made a video on beta enemies in the past, but since then a great deal more detail and models have been found, but we'll quickly review the old stuff too. Specifically, the Beta Womp and Thwomps. Womps, or called Wallmen at the time, have a much more serious looking face as opposed to the major change of the final games. Also, his bandaid was a lot cartoonier. Thwomps, however, had a more simpler and somehow flatter face overall. The Scuttlebug originally looking a lot madder, with odd looking eyes and a red body as opposed to this amazing tie-dye design of the final game. The Shark Sushi having a simpler design, with a rather darker body. Heave Ho is looking rather colorful originally, in fact being called Amurice in the data, due to the color scheme originally I guess. Instead of the key on its back, they had flags, and the body was shaped slightly differently. The Bullies, the Wigglers, Spindrift, Chain Chomp, Chukya, Skeeters, Swoopers, and of course Bob-Omb and King bob -omb, all were said to have 3D polygonal bodies originally. If that confuses you, well in the final game, all of them were rendered with a flat 2D texture that followed the direction of the camera, so you'd be tricked into thinking it is actually 3D. But these all became 2D renders in the end, likely as a means to save on resources. I mean, I can only imagine how badly bob -omb Battlefield might run with fully 3D models everywhere. Now looking at some of these enemies closer, the Wiggler along with his 3D body was also going to be wearing these stylish sunglasses and what might be a hat too? 
The Spindrift had a minor difference of having a happy 3D grin, and its arms were slightly different too. The Chakya was also of a completely different color scheme, being yellow in this case with a purple top knot. Supers, however, are only 2D in their wings, but originally their wings were also going to be in full 3D too. Bullies were also set to have a single central horn, this being in line with their frosty counterparts in the final game, before being made into two horns. Speaking of chill bullies, a smaller variant of them was also being made too, but only the larger one appears in the final game. Now on to the threatening Unagi, who look less threatening by also being yellow originally. The team sure had an obsession with yellow enemies initially. This also had a lot less teeth and simpler eyes too. If I saw this as a kid, I might have not been as scarred. The Manta enemy also had a slightly different model, having harsher lighting and with slightly different textures. Koopa Troopas also had a beta model, which had a much simpler shell and shoes, of which can be found in the final game's data as a rideable shell, that along with a red shell actually being found that might point to the team even considering red Koopa Troopas too, which Mario 64 DS even considered bringing them back, but scrapped ultimately. Now let's talk about three entirely cut enemies with beta models in existence. The first is Blarg, which still is in the final game's data too, and was set to appear in Lethal Lava Land. The enemy originated from Super Mario World, and was seemingly going to follow the usual trick of bouncing out of the lava and hitting Mario based on the animation of him we have. This might have been how surfing on the Koopa shell in Lethal Lava Land would have been stopped. The other model we have is of the cut enemy Motos. Along with his 3D body, functions very much like a Chakya in grabbing Mario and tossing him. It's possible this was even going to be a beta Chakya, or that they made two enemies that were too similar, and one had to be cut, and that was Motos. And now for one rather unknown cut enemy, Hopper, which is a very intricately designed grasshopper enemy, with animation still around too, an annoying enemy to fight considering punching might have been the only safe bet with them. Now outside of live creatures, there are also a ton of objects with their beta models too, some that were also cut entirely. Starting off with the first thing you see in the game, the warp pipe. Originally having a more archaic design, block here and with a bigger top. The flagpole for the race with Koopa the Quick also had a much earlier simpler design. Speaking of flags, an early flag of the one that appears on Princess Peach's castle also exists that looks similar to the one that was found within the old patented shots of the castle. Of course we can now see them in full color. Remember the treasure chests in Jolly Roger Bay? Well here is their very crude and colorful beta versions, and they were absolutely massive. To be honest, this size would have made much more sense for holding the amount of oxygen needed to lift the entire ship up compared to these small boxes. The coins of the game also had an earlier design too, which resembled more the classic designs from the series. The stars from the final game were rendered in full 3D, but in fact were going to be 2D stars originally, resembling that of Super Mario RPG. Remnants of this star design can still be found on the title screen of the game, but in silver. Now for completely unused objects. Let's begin with the trampoline, which of course would have functioned a lot like the spring from Sonic the Hedgehog. Yes, Nintendo does what Sega did, or so it would have. The trampoline was set to appear in the special cap stage, presumably the flying cap stage, as a way to use it as a jump point. Would have been nice too for when losing momentum and missing those few red coins at the beginning. There is also this beta platform that has a checkered design, which was meant to appear in Big Boo's Haunt originally. Of course that level isn't very platform heavy, so thus why it might have went unused. Speaking of Big Boo's Haunt, let's talk about these beta keys. I know some of you may be sick of how much I have brought these up in previous videos, but the video isn't complete without mentioning them in a beta models video. So quickly going over them, there were four colored keys that were set to appear in Big Boo's Haunt that would be held by the Boos. When defeated, they drop and you'd be able to collect them. A key counter exists too in the data for holding such keys. The likely idea would have been that you would use these keys to unlock the doors in Big Boo's Haunt, but since it was already a somewhat complicated level, it may have been scrapped for that very reason. Now comes the unused yellow switch. Unlike the red, blue and green switches of the game that unlock the respective boxes, a yellow switch also exists for the already active yellow boxes. Of course by already being active, the switch is actually pressed by default, but if one were to unpress it, 
it would actually deactivate the yellow boxes too. Considering how the yellow boxes contained a variety of items including coins, Koopa shells, and even stars, it may have been deemed too necessary to ever keep it unpressed. There was also going to be some underwater mines within Dire Dire Docks that are actually in the 1995 demo. This still being in the data too, and looking a lot like the bombs in the Bowser fights. If one were to restore them, they would indeed detonate on Mario if he crashes into them. As well, there was going to be a plethora of trees in Super Mario 64 that were cut, two of which are early pine trees that look to fit the snow level of the game, but opted out for a more cartoony one, as well as a darker design for the existing trees of the game, and three entirely different trees that may have been set to be used for variation. Now lastly is this Yoshi egg. On first inspection, this egg obviously looks like an egg that a Yoshi would hatch out of, and that I can't deny, considering Yoshi's were set to be playable at 1.2, but there is a lot more to the story it seems. The egg is labeled as bird underscore egg in the data, which is the same prefix that the bird hoot from the game uses, and it seems there is also a deleted object next to hoot called E underscore bird underscore egg that may have even been the original placement of this object. Some theorize that Hoot in fact hatched out of this egg, but I have my doubts that they give a literal Yoshi egg for this bird to hatch out of, and in my opinion would have probably stuck to a more simple egg or a more unique egg for the bird. Thus my theory is that Hoot in fact carried this egg, and once separated would hatch into a Yoshi. Returning to Super Mario 64 after a couple of years really showed how much more had been discovered on this game's cut content, that a video of this length was able to be put together with both new and updated information, and over time, more might even come out. But for now, it is time to look into the future, into games such as Super Mario Sunshine and Super Mario Galaxy, games I plan to cover soon, so hit the subscribe button for I plan to be back with more Mario and other games cut content soon. Hit the like button and comment below on which of these beta models you would have liked to have seen. So everyone, thank you for watching!